Summary of Room by Emma Donahue. Jack celebrates his fifth birthday by waking up next to his mother in room, the 11 by 11 shed he has lived in his entire life. It becomes very evident that Jack and Ma are held captive by a man whom they simply refer to as Old Nick as they celebrate his birthday by remembering about the day he was born, baking a cake, playing games, and watching television. Old Nick is the real father of Jack, and Ma has been locked up in room for seven years since she was kidnapped when she was 19. She and Jack are barely alive and sane. Even though Ma is only 26, she already has a bad wrist, bad teeth, and an almost uncontrollable drug addiction. This means that she has gone days when she can't get out of bed. Jack thinks that a lot of the things that he and Ma do together are games, but they're really meant to draw attention to the isolated hovel that Ma and Jack are not allowed to leave. For example, they play orchestra by banging on walls and objects and scream by screaming as loudly as they can at the skylight. It also becomes clear that Jack doesn't think there is a world outside of room. His mother told him that after room, there is only outer space and that the things they see on TV are fake events taking place on other planets. Jack doesn't really understand reality, but he has a huge language, a strong sense of right and wrong, and he wants more from life, like toys and animal friends. A few nights a week, old Nick comes to room to bring food and rate Ma. Every time he comes in through a heavy door with an electronic code, Ma hides Jack in the wardrobe so that both he and old Nick can't see him. A lot of things happen right after Jack's birthday that change how he sees room and the world beyond it. To begin, Jack sees old Nick choke Ma one night. Next, Jack sees a TV ad for Ma's killers and starts to question whether or not things he sees on TV are real. Third, Jack finds a mouse that is still living in room. This makes him realize that there are other animals nearby. Ma tries to teach Jack more about the world and how she was abducted by telling him dream stories. But Jack is easily upset by Ma's stories, and he doesn't understand why she keeps comparing herself to Alice in Wonderland. Jack hears old Nick tell Ma one night that he hasn't had a job in six months and is having a hard time paying his bills. Old Nick's talk interests Jack, so he gets out of wardrobe in the middle of the night to look at him. Old Nick wakes up and tries to talk to Jack. This makes Ma very angry, and she starts yelling. Old Nick turns off the power for a few days as a punishment for Ma's mistake. As it gets colder, Ma and Jack almost run out of food. This makes Ma understand she needs to do something to improve their situation before old Nick does something even worse. Ma starts to talk about her kidnapping and the world outside of room in more specific terms. Jack starts to understand what's going on, even though he keeps getting confused about what's real and what's not. Ma starts getting Jack ready to try to leave, which makes Jack tired and confused. When the power comes back on, Ma asks Jack to help her make a plan to get away. Jack tells Ma to use the same trick that old Nick used to get her to fall for him all those years ago. Old Nick got Ma by walking up to her on her college campus and acting like he needed help with his sick dog. Now, Ma knows that if she acts like Jack is really sick, old Nick will have to take Jack to the hospital and let him ask for help. When Ma asks him to help her, Jack says he's not ready, but he does it anyway. After telling old Nick that Jack is starting to feel sick, Ma starts to carry out her plan. That night, she wouldn't let Jack take a shower or flush the toilet, and she used a spoon to make his poop look like diarrhea. Soon, old Nick will be there, so she puts a bag of hot water on Jack's face and even throws up on his shirt to make him smell bad. Ma begs old Nick to check on Jack and take him to the hospital when he gets there. Nick, who is old and suspicious, doesn't want to take Jack to the emergency room. Instead, he tells Ma that he'll bring some medicine tomorrow night. Jack tells Ma he's sorry the plan didn't work out. Ma, on the other hand, is very excited about plan B, lying that Jack has died and sneaking him out safely wrapped up in a rug. Jack doesn't like this plan as much as the first one, but Ma tells him that this is their last chance. Jack is told about the new plan by his mother. He will be rolled up in rug and must stay very stiff while old Nick carries him to his trailer truck. 
Jack's mom gets him ready to jump out of the truck at the first stop sign. When old Nick comes over the next night, Jack hears as Ma tells him that Jack has died and urges old Nick to bury him far away. Old Nick agrees, and Jack soon feels like he's being drawn up into the air. Everything goes just the way Ma said it would, but Jack has trouble rolling up rug and misses the first two stop signs. He jumps out of the third one, but old Nick sees him and runs after him. A man walking his dog is hit head-on by Jack, and the dog bites Jack's finger. Jack starts to scream as old Nick catches up to him and carries him back to the car. The man with the dog then calls the cops. Nicky drops Jack off and drives off. The man, whose name is Ajit, stays with Jack until the cops show up. An understanding police officer called Officer O starts to question Jack about what happened. Jack has a hard time both understanding and answering her questions, but Officer O is determined to find out what happened. When Jack tells Officer O that he comes from a small room with a skylight that is not on any map, Officer O and her partner use satellites to look for independent buildings in the area with skylights and are able to figure out where room is. The police arrive quickly, free Ma, and put her back with Jack. Jack tells Ma he wants to go back to room and go to bed as they hug. Jack starts to cry when Ma tells him that they will never go back to room. Following a trip to the police station to talk to the captain, Ma and Jack are taken to a nearby psychiatric center to be checked out, given care, and given time to rest. There are a lot of paparazzi following them around both the station and the clinic. The news has already heard their story. Kind doctor Dr. Kendrick gets a rape kit from Ma and cleans up Jack's cuts and dog bite. A psychiatrist named Dr. Clay presents himself as Ma and Jack's main doctor. Ma and Jack are so tired that they fall asleep as soon as they get to their room. When Jack wakes up in the morning, he finds a whole new world. His jaw drops as he looks out the window at the city below. There are so many people and buildings there. Jack doesn't understand why Ma throws away their old clothes and takes a shower instead of a bath before breakfast, which is what they usually do first. Jack wants to go back to his old life, even though Ma tries to tell him that they're no longer bound by the rules of room. As Jack and his mother meet the hospital staff, go to therapy, and get medical care, Jack is having a hard time getting used to the faster pace of his life. It turns out that old Nick has been sent to jail. Ma and Jack also have visits from Leo, Grandma's new husband, and Ma's mother, whom Jack calls Grandma. Ma is glad to see her mother again, but she is sad that her parents are no longer together and that her father has moved to Australia. As the days go by, Jack and Ma look around the clinic, but they don't spend much time outside because of the cameras and Jack's anxiety when he's around people. A lawyer tells Ma that she should either sue the media for using her picture without her permission or agree to a big interview because she needs to make sure that she and Jack will have money in the future. Ma gets back together with her brother Paul, and she and Jack meet Deanna, Paul's wife. Ma finds it hard to balance these happy times with her family with her work to keep Jack out of the news about their case and help him deal with his great anxiety about being outside. Ma gets some much-needed teeth work done, which boosts her confidence and sense of self-worth. She and Jack then start counting every night how many friends they've made in the world so far. But things go off the rails again when Grandpa, Ma's father, shows up. He can't stand being in the same room as Jack because he thinks he is weird. Ma agrees to a big TV interview, but as the reporter starts to ask her more and more invasive and damaging questions that make her look selfish for not taking Jack to a hospital or shelter with old Nick, Ma starts to cry. The day after the interview, Ma is gone, and Jack is shocked that she still has days when she's not in room. Jack goes to the mall with Paul, Deanna, and Bronwyn, their three-year-old daughter. The trip is stressful and hard to understand, and when Jack gets back to the hospital, Ma is not responding. As the nurses and doctors try to bring Ma back to life, Jack sees that her killer's bottle is empty. Ma is out of it when Jack tells her she had a bad idea. Ma is getting better after trying to kill herself, and Jack goes to stay with Grandma and Leo, whom he calls Steppa. 
Grandma and Steppa have a hard time understanding Jack's strange ways of talking, thinking, and seeing the world. They also have a hard time dealing with Jack's severe separation anxiety when he is not with Ma. Grandma and Steppa are slowly getting closer to Jack. Jack talks to Ma on the phone every two days. She tells him she's getting better, but they still can't see each other. Jack likes spending time with his grandparents and stepfather more and more. They show him parks, Legos, potato chips, and even the ocean for the first time. After a few weeks, Ma shows up at Jack's house out of the blue. He is thrilled to see her, and Ma can't wait to tell him that they've found an apartment in an independent living facility with good security and counselors on staff 24 hours a day. When someone sends them things from room after they move, Ma and Jack get into a terrible fight over whether they should keep the things or not. Jack still seems to miss room, which makes Ma mad. As the weeks go by, Ma and Jack spend time with their family, try new foods and activities, and write down things they want to do in the future. But Jack keeps talking about room and saying he wants to go back. Ma finally calls Officer O, but she doesn't want to. She wants to know if she can go with them one last time to room. Officer O takes Ma and Jack to old Nick's house the next day and walks them to the backyard, where they face Room. Jack is amazed at how little Room is and asks Ma if it has shrunk, but Ma says it's the same size as always. Ma helps Jack say goodbye to everything in Room, and then the two of them leave it behind for good. About the author Emma Donahue was born in Ireland in 1969. She grew up in Dublin and got her English literature degrees from both the University of Cambridge and University College Dublin. Christine Rolson and Donahue moved to Canada in 1998, which is Rolson's home country. They have lived there ever since. Donahue's books, like Stir Fry, Hood, Slammer Kin, and The International Bestseller Room, 2010, are mostly about the lives and problems of women throughout history, and they often have lesbian themes. Room was her most popular book to date. It was nominated for the 2010 Man Booker Prize and the Orange Prize for Fiction, and it was later made into a movie starring Brie Larson in 2015. Larson got a lot of attention for her part in the movie version of Room, and she won an Academy Award for it. Donahue wrote the screenplay based on her own book. She was nominated for an Academy Award, a Golden Globe Award, and a BAFTA Award for her work. Donahue has also written a lot of short stories, plays, and critical articles. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.